Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. We'll look at verses 57 through 62. Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62. The title of the message is, Are You 100% Sold Out? Are You 100% Sold Out? Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62. The Bible says, And it came to pass, that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. Verse 62. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. And Brother Calvin, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today, Lord, that we get to come here and worship you, Lord, fellowship, hear the preaching, Lord, of your word. Lord, we thank you for the King James Bible. Lord, oftentimes it is difficult for us to understand. And we thank you for a Bible-believing pastor to preach your word and explain that to us, Lord. We pray that you fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit, Amen. help him to preach with power, conviction, and with liberty, Lord. Yes, Lord. And may the lesson we learn today help us in our daily lives, Lord. Uh, please fill us with your Holy Spirit so yes. we may understand your words. Please bless the fellowship, bless the meeting. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you 100% sold out? You can't do great things unless you are 100% sold out to certain things. In order to be great at any measure, in order to be great at any job, occupation, whatever you do, you have to be 100% sold out to do and to produce the best results. If you look at your past, if you look at things that you've done in your past or you have accomplished in the past, if you have put in 100%, if you're sold out 100%, I know for sure that you have no regrets. I know for sure that the result you are going to be satisfied with. When you're serving Jesus Christ, you have to be 100% sold out to Jesus Christ. It can't be 95% ministry. It can't be 90% ministry. What happens if you're not 100% sold out to Jesus Christ? You're going to compromise. You're going to sin. You're going to go after pleasures of life more than pleasures of Lord Jesus Christ. That's why many Christians start off well. They think they sold out 100% to Jesus Christ. However, once some obstacles come in their way, once hindrances start blocking their way, what happens? They are not 100% sold out for Jesus Christ. They weren't in the first place. They thought they were, but once those you know, hardships come their way, they realize that, you know what? You know, I have better things to do. I have more comfort. I need to choose comfort more than commitment to Jesus Christ. As you look at your Christian life today, think about where you stand. Are you 100% sold out to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, or are you sold out to something other? Again, if it's not 100%, it's not 100%. So if you're not 100%, then you have some work to do. How many of you think that, you know, don't raise your hand. How many of you think that you're 100% sold out to our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ today. You have to reflect your life. As we look at our passage today, these are tests of discipleship. You know, discipleship is different from salvation, by the way. As these passages that we read, you know, 57 through 62, you could see that it deals with discipleship. There are many people, there are many Christians who 
truly trusted Christ for salvation, but never successfully follow Christ in their Christian life. You could be one of those people. You have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you're saved once and for all. However, after you get saved, it is totally different. But don't get confused with the doctrine of you know, lordship salvation, where people say if Christ is not Lord of all, he is not Lord at all. Like that's a Calvinistic heresy. You know, people believing those things will straight go down to hell. And you see, you know, MacArthur's of the world, you know, they say, okay, if you're truly saved, you know, why is your life like that? I mean, because we are all human beings. You know, salvation and works are totally different. If you personally trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and trusting only his precious blood for your atonement of sins, then you're saved. I mean, we see it everywhere in the word of God. You know, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth's confession is made unto salvation. So salvation only hinges on one question. Have you personally received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? That's it. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, no matter who says it, no matter what says it, no matter, no matter you know, whatever you hear, you're saved once and for all. However, discipleship is an entirely different matter. It is 100% different. Discipleship is actively following the Lord Jesus Christ in your daily walk as a Christian. Daily. I mean, are you following the Lord Jesus Christ in your daily walk as a Christian, every part of your life? Then that involves what? In order to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, in order to practice discipleship, works are involved. So that's a huge difference. Salvation, no works. Discipleship, works. So you can't be, you know, other end of spectrum where I'm saved, I can do whatever I want. You know, we have factions of people out there, so-called Christians. Since I received Jesus Christ, I'm just going to do whatever I want. I'm going to drink. I'm going to smoke. I'm going to do whatever I want. I don't need to be faithful to my wife or husband. You know, at the end of the day, I'm going to heaven. You know, that kind of mindset will truly, truly, you know, make that person go straight down to the gutter. I mean, they won't burn in hell, but they have a lot to answer at the judgment seat of Christ, especially if they don't get right with the Lord. So if you truly want to practice discipleship, then you have to understand that I need to do some works, right? I mean, hopefully, you know, people aren't going to take this out of context, right? You go, oh, works, works. But this work is not involved with what? Salvation. Then as we see our passage, we see three type of tests of discipleship. Number one, let's look at verse 57. Verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. So in this first case, the fellow had good intentions, but he didn't consider the consequences of his decision. So first one is that the person did not consider the consequences of his decision. If you follow Jesus Christ, he might have thought that he would receive more blessing. You hear that all the time. Believe in the Lord, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then they add, okay, you'll be more prosperous. You know, you'll have more house. You'll move into a bigger house. You'll have better car. Your bank account will grow, right? And then you'll meet better people. No, that's not what the Lord said. What did the Lord say? And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, for the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. If your intention of following Jesus Christ is to have more 
physical, material things here on earth, you're following for the wrong reason. If you think that following Jesus Christ will make you get a better job, will make you move into a better house, will make you get better things, will help you travel to all around the world and have more pleasures in life, you're following for the wrong reasons. The Lord never promised this person a house. He said he might not even have a place to lay his head anywhere. But where's your mindset at? Are you following Jesus Christ to be rich? I mean, that's not being 100% sold out. Why? Because if anything goes wrong in your financial state, then you're going to give up on Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to be telling yourself, why did I follow the Lord on a daily basis for the past five years, past 10 years, and I have received no blessings financially? The Bible says, I mean, love of money is root of evil, right? Then you follow Jesus Christ not to follow Jesus Christ because you're 100% sold out to him. You follow Jesus Christ because of your ulterior motives, your fleshly motives, your selfish motives. Then you have to check yourself today. You have to remind yourself today, why am I following my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ? He said, for because if I follow him, I receive something. You cannot follow him without considering the consequences of following him. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, what did he say? Be ye followers of me, even as I am, I am also of Christ. I also am of Christ. You guys want to follow Apostle Paul because he was followers of, follower of Jesus Christ. What happened to Apostle Paul? I mean, did he have the biggest house? Did he have the biggest wagon? I don't know if they had cars back then. Right? I mean, did he have the biggest cattle ranch? Right? Did he eat the best meals? No, let's see what happened to Apostle Paul. And you say, I want to follow Christ, and I want to be like Apostle Paul. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. Because everything that comes out of your mouth, you're going to be accountable for it. Because as a Christian, just to park it a little bit here, the things that come out of your mouth is your responsibility. Amen. It doesn't matter how other person receives it. Even if you say to a you know, sister, hey, you look pretty today. Oh, man, was I not pretty for other weeks, you know? Why suddenly today? You tell a guy, like, okay, you look you know, good today. Why was I not good other weeks? Because you have to consider what comes out of your mouth. And if there's no good thing that's going to come out from what comes out of your mouth, then don't say it at all. That's like number one rule. If it's not going to benefit anybody, if it's not going to benefit the whole church, if it's not going to benefit the body of Jesus Christ, don't say it because you haven't considered the consequences of your decision to say those things. You criticize and you criticize and you murmur. I mean, a common characteristic of churchgoers, common characteristic of many, many so-called Christians you love to murmur. You love to criticize. Yeah, that, that Bible teacher shouldn't teach that way, right? Why is that person there? Why is that person not there? You know, there's a better person to teach that class. That's me. But, uh, you know, pastor never talks to me about it, right? And you start complaining and complaining and complaining about everything that's going on. As if you're the owner of the church. As if you're the leader of the whole ministry. What happened when Moses was leading those Israelites? Two million. He set up certain people to lead their tribes. But what was the most common thing about those Israelites? They were murmurs. They complained about everything. Lord provides them with everything. And they complain and complain and complain. And some of you sitting here and listening, your mind is just full of complaints. All you do is just murmur. 
I mean, your mind is like, man, we're learning about Joshua? When are we ever going to learn about minor prophets? You know, oh, we're just studying New Testament. What about Old Testament? Right? When are we ever going to learn about prophecies and go to Revelation? As if you're the best Bible scholar, as if you know more than Dr. Ruckman, as if you know more than the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the way you behave. Again, if you say, I want to follow Jesus Christ and I want to be like Apostle Paul because he said, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ, then you have to consider and you have to make sure that things that come out of your mouth is beneficial to everybody. If it's not, don't say it. It makes you look like a fool. It makes you look like rebel. It makes you look like, you know, those cons- conspire- conspiring people who's going to betray, right? And at the end of the day, you don't even realize that you're doing devil's work. That's why you have to make sure when you follow Lord Jesus Christ, you might have good intentions, but you have to consider the consequences of your decision. If you don't consider your consequences of your decision, you're going to make How should I say? You're going to make devilish decisions. You're going to be acting on behalf of Satan. You say, you know, I don't believe in Satan. Satan can never use me. Of course he can. Why do you think church is split? Why do you think brother and sister hate each other forever? Why do you think people leave church? It's all because of you. Because of things that come out of your mouth. And if it did come out of your mouth, it doesn't matter if you were good intentions. It's on you. You did not think about the consequences your decision will bring. Again, if I have to say this 100 times, just remember, because every day we make decisions over and over and over. If you don't consider consequences of your decision, you're never going to follow Christ the way that you should. Then let's go again. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 23 through 28. Now you have to ask yourself, are you ready to go through the kinds of things through which Apostle Paul had to go through? He said, I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want to practice discipleship then let's think about if you're ready for it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in death oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I bitten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and in and night and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. He has care of all the churches. On top of that, he went through everything else. I mean everything else. So before you hastily say, I follow Jesus Christ. I'm willing to be sold out 100%. Think about it. If your mind is not ready, again, when the Bible says set your affection on things above, you know, if you have affection for Jesus Christ, affections come from the heart. It's not from your head. So let's first get that out of the way. If it's coming from your heart, are you willing to go through 
everything that Apostle Paul went through. I mean, he died for Christ. He came back. And that's a common question, right? Are you ready to die for Jesus Christ? Don't say yes so hastily because you're the first person who's going to say no. You know, when circumstances become hard, when someone points gun at you, are you going to be ready? I mean, that's why, think about it. If you follow Jesus Christ, you might be in prison. You might get beat up, right? You might lose everything. Think about it. You might lose your loved ones. You might lose all of the relationships around you. You might lose your health. Are you willing to follow Jesus Christ? Even with all those things, consider. If you say, I'm not sure, then that's an honest answer. You know, examine your heart and get right with the Lord and then see what is best in your life. Because last thing I want any one of us to do is pretenders or hypocrites. Because if you're not 100% sold out for Lord Jesus Christ, when you're not here, I guarantee you, you're not going to be a saint outside of the church, as they say. You're going to be that person cussing. You're going to be that person full of wrath. You're going to be that person going to the wrong places. You're going to be that person looking at the wrong things. You're going to be that person... I mean, thinking about all these all this worldly things and pleasures of sin. So don't think that, you know what, you know, I could get away with it. I'll show people that I'm sold out at church, but outside of church, if you behave different, you're worse than someone who says, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. There are a lot of things going on in my life, and I can't be sold out 100%. And I'll pray for you, brother. I'll pray for you, sister. All right? Hopefully, you know, you, you get right with the Lord, everything works out. You know, pray to the Lord together. And then, you know, sincerely from your heart, you sold out. You, you give 100% to the Lord. You and I always fall into this trap. We move a little bit and then we think that we're 100% closer to the Lord. You're not. It's a process. It's a small step you have to take on a daily basis. And a lot of times, that step becomes smaller and smaller at certain stages of your life. Mature Christians, many of them realize that. They realize that, you know what, I was not ready. I just said it because of my selfish and, you know, because of my pride. Because I didn't want to look, you know, weak to other people. I didn't want to look weak to my husband, you know, my wife, my children. So I gave this false sense of, you know, countenance, right? But it within deep inside of you. And you know it, and the Lord knows it. You are trying to fool everybody, but you were really, really in a bad state. So people could smile at you, but deep inside, they could be the most miserable person in the world. You could hide from me. You could hide from people around you. You could hide from your family. You could hide from your husband and your wife. But you cannot hide from Lord Jesus Christ. He's inside of you. But you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. He knows everything. It's funny. When this person asked, I mean, he, he, he said, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. But Lord knew his heart. I mean, he said, foxes have holes, right? But... But the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. I'm not going to provide you with a house. And I'm not going to provide you with transportation or anything. I mean, have you considered that? Obviously, many people just like him haven't thought about that. That's why you have to understand that if I'm 100% sold out for my Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, I most likely will go through or majority of what Apostle Paul had to go through. 
I mean, are you ready? Are you willing to sold out 100% like that to the Lord? I mean, if you say yes, you know, good for you. If you have to say, I have to think about it, hey, practical. If you say no, then you have to get right with the Lord, obviously. You know, I'm not going to be 100% sold out to the Lord. I respect your decision, but honestly, you're at the wrong place. All right? That definitely tells you and me that you're living in sin and you're backslidden. It's okay. There's always second, third, fourth chance with Lord Jesus Christ. Only thing is that if you're going down, go by yourself. Don't take others with you. That's number one thing. If you hate me, if you hate the pastor, just hate it by yourself. Hate me by yourself. Don't start telling others about it, and then they get swayed by you, and they go down together. Don't do it. Look what happened to Israelites. Many were just destroyed because of that. So if you have any complaints towards you know, church ministry, you know, our YouTube ministry, you know, Pastor Senior Kim, you know, you know, myself, Mrs. Kim, my wife, you know, any of the teachers, just keep it to yourself. That's a great advice. And you don't want to come? We never ask you to come, right? It's the decision. You, you, just, you just go do your thing. You know, gather around with people who hate me, you know, who hate other, you know, our Bible-believing pastors, and have a meeting together with them. We never want you to you know, not enjoy your Christian life, you know, go with the murmurs together. Right? But we know the end what's going to be. It's just that you cannot, because of your selfish reasons, bring others down with you. If you're not 100% sold out for Jesus Christ, don't tell others about it. Just keep it to yourself. And you don't have to tell others about it. People could see. People aren't dumb. They know more about you than themselves. What does that mean? They don't look at their own faults. They always look at faults of the others. So if you have faults, people already know your faults. Right? They don't have to worry about that. That's why and testimony is important where you don't know your own faults, but you could always see other people's fault. Isn't that funny? I mean, you have poop on your face, but you see poops on everybody else's face. And tell others about it as you are thinking to the other person as you speak. <laughs> and then when people do listen to you, they're like, man, this stinky poo is talking to me about other people's poo when this person has the poo on their face. So before you commit to anything, so like number one, just like this fellow, consider, right? He didn't consider the consequences of decision, but you have to consider consequences of your decision. You know, on a side note, I mean, if you, people like foxholes, you know, you know that expression, right? Military term, foxholes. Bible has a lot of terms that unsaved, unbelieving world uses. Just for FYI, right? Beer. You talk to a drunk anywhere. Hey, where did the word beer come from? What do you think they're going to say? I don't know. I don't know. Who cares? You know, I'm just enjoying you know, my alcohol. No. Beer comes from King James Bible. From Numbers chapter 21, verse 16. Where does highway come from? From King James Bible. Numbers 20, 17. It doesn't matter if you believe in the word of God or not. You know, many unbelievers just quote King James Bible in their daily lives until he realized at the judgment, wow, I've been quoting the word of God all the time, and I did not receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. How foolish was I? And then there's going to be a lot of regrets. So we see first case. Let's go back to, you know, go back to Luke. Okay, Luke. Let's go back to Luke 
chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. We'll look at second case here. Verse 59. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. So what was wrong with the second person here? He doesn't get up and leave all to follow Jesus Christ. If you want to be 100% sold out for Jesus Christ, you have to get up and leave everything and follow Christ. It could be your job. It could be your family. It could be anything. In this case, a lot of people will be like, man, wasn't the Lord a little bit too harsh? Right? This guy says, you know, Lord, suffer me. You know, that is like, allow me, Lord. You know, permit me first to go bury my father. That looks like a reasonable request. However, what Lord wants is that, am I more important to you? Then your father, then your mother, your spouse, your children, your money, your material. I mean, it's the Lord Jesus Christ more important to you than anything else. You want to be sold out 100% to Lord Jesus Christ? He has to be the most important thing in your life. I mean, doctrinally, when the Lord says, let the you know, dead bury, they're dead, right? He's talking about you know, people who are dead in their trespasses and sins, according to Ephesians 2.1. Yeah. That includes everyone to whom Christ was talking at that time. Why? Because there was no new birth before resurrection. So let the bur- dead bury the dead. If you know that if I follow Jesus Christ, I have to give up my relationship with my father, my mother, my spouse, my children, what would you do? Because many people are not 100% sold out to Jesus Christ. It's because there are more things more important to that person than Jesus Christ. If you're not willing to give up everything, then don't say, I am here to follow you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't think he's the most important person in your life, in this case, you have to start comparing. Make some comparisons, right? Will I choose Jesus Christ or my wife? Will I choose Jesus Christ or my husband? Will I choose Jesus Christ or my mom? Will I choose Jesus Christ or my dad? Will I choose my Jesus Christ or my jaw? Will I choose Jesus Christ or my health? Will I choose Jesus Christ? Everything else in between. If Lord says, I mean, this one, Lord actually called him. Unlike the first and third case, Lord said, follow me. If Lord were to call you, any of you here and people is listening, are you going to get up, leave everything, and follow him? person who's 100% sold out will do that. But if you're not 100% sold out because Lord is not the most important thing in your life, you're going to start saying like this person, Lord, let me just go bury my dad. You know, Lord, you know, let me close out this. You know, Lord, Lord, let me just take care of this. Lord, Lord. You and I lose this thing. Isn't the Lord Almighty God? If he called you, don't you think he's going to make it happen? Don't you think he could take care of you and your family if he has called you? 
many people lose their blessings from the Lord because they're called, but they don't answer. They're called, but they answer only halfway. They're called, but they go 90%, 99%, but they can't go 100%. Don't you think it would be a greatest blessing in your life if Lord calls you to go and do something for him? I think that is the best thing that could happen to any Christian. I mean, some are called to be a preacher, pastor, missionary, you know, girls become, you know, missionary's wife, pastor's wife, you know, be in the ministry. The Lord does call people. If it's you, it's up to you to answer him. And your answer, you know, shouldn't be, let me do this first, Lord. Let me do that first, Lord. You just say, just like Isaiah, you know, here am I, Lord, right? Send me. And you just go. Is Lord Jesus Christ that important to you in your life? If you and I consider him as the most important thing in our life, then we wouldn't live the way we live right now, literally. If he was the most important thing in your life, you don't go after pleasures of life. You go after the Lord. You follow him. It is something that you and I have to seriously go to the Lord in deep, deep prayer and get right with the Lord about. Stop saying that he is the most important thing in my life. It's not. Your life doesn't show. So let's stop giving excuses, you and I, and let's just get serious about it. Again, What could be better than being 100% sold out for Jesus Christ? Nothing. And if you have been sold out to Jesus Christ 100% before, then you know how much joy you had in your life. What is joy anyways? You hear this acronym all the time. Joy, Jesus, others, and you. You have Jesus first, others second, and you last. Someone who sold out 100% to Jesus Christ is always, always Jesus first, others second, and you last. If you look at your life today, is Jesus first? Okay, you say yes. Are others second? No. Because me is me and Jesus, right? And then others. But that's not joy, though. That becomes what? Jew, you know, right? But a lot of times it's all the way around. It's always YOJ, right? YOJ. You know, you first, and then others, and then Jesus Christ last. Wow, man, this. Discipleship is really, really hard, right? When you think about it. It's not something you could just play around with. It's not, again, requirement for salvation, but it's requirement to live joyfully as a Christian. Jesus, others, and you. Then you stop becoming a selfish person. You stop becoming like a little child. I want this. I want that. It's for me. You know, you start considering other people. You start loving other brothers and sisters in Christ. You start loving your family more. You start loving your spouses more. You start loving your parents more. You start looking at from their perspective instead of your own all the time. That's like going back to the first point where he didn't consider the consequences of his decision. Then you wouldn't say, you know, stupid stuff out of your mouth. For example, say I miss Sunday, right? And then I know some of you guys can be like, man, 
that pastor is wicked. You know, he didn't come and preach, you know, that Sunday, right? And then I come next week and I tell you, you know what? You know, a friend of mine passed away. So I had to be at the hospital, you know, to talk to him about the salvation. And you look like a fool, right? You don't even know the whole story. And you start blabbering things. And then you see, like, some brother and sister don't show up at the church. Man, they're backslidden, huh? Right? I'm here today, but they're not here. You know, how wicked they, they are, right? Come to find out, you know, they're going through a really, really hardships right now in their life, right? And then, you know, they're struggling with certain things, whether it be emotionally, physically, mentally, financially. And they had to make ends meet, you know, they had to feed their family. So had to work and couldn't show up. And then after you find out, you look like a fool, right? That's why you should never say something that is not going to benefit the body of Christ. Amen. That's just period, right? Think about it. If it's going to hurt the person that I'm speaking against, you know, why would you say it? Yeah. Obviously, if it's sin and stuff, yeah, you have to speak up, right? If someone comes up to you and be like, hey, let's do drugs together, okay. You know, let's go get some drink together, right? And then those stuff, yeah, that's black and white clear. But when it comes to other matters, right, especially involving their personal life and you don't know their personal life, then leave it alone. You don't have to be like paparazzi, you know. We don't, churches don't need paparazzi everywhere. You know, you shouldn't be that person. <laughs> if there's someone, say, if me and Brother Kelvin's having a conversation and it seems serious, right? You shouldn't be that person just, you know, sneaking in little by little, you know, have your cup of coffee or drink and then trying to listen in, right? You know, what is that so important that they're so serious about it, right? <laughs> or like, you just go to any person because you like that person, right? And then you're like, oh, I like that person. I'm, I want to know everything about that person. So you're just around that person all the time and trying to listen to everything. You know? Motive is wrong. right? Don't be that person, whether you're little, big, in between. Don't be that person, busybody. You cannot be sold out 100% for Jesus Christ if you're a busybody and gossiper, murmurer. Trying to be, you know, you know, paparazzi. Yeah. It's it's not the greatest testimony. If you are popping up at everywhere when someone's having conversation, right? I mean, if you're here, it's like you know, some people are not as tall, right? But if you're super tall, you're always recognizable, right? Well, you know. Kids do wicked stuff, too, because they're like spies for their parents. So if you see a little kid like this tall, and suddenly I'm having a conversation with, say, you know, Caleb about, you know, church ministry. And, like, we looked down, and this guy was standing there the whole time, listening to everything. And then suddenly the parents then start complaining to others, you know, oh, man, you know, I heard Pastor Jay and, you know, Teacher Caleb talking about somebody, you know. Man, you are that devil. I mean, you're that little kid, you know, who causes issues. And you love to talk about other people with your parents. So young people, be careful. I mean, if your job, you think at church, is not to learn the word of God, but to get other people's dirt, and then sharing with your family every Sunday night at a Sunday night dinner, and then start smiling and laughing and giggling about, you know, what's going on with other people's life, then just remember that you're doing the works of the devil. Right? It's got to get to your head. Don't be busybody, gossiper. Don't be that person who tries to split the church in half. Again, if you want to be 100% sold out for Jesus Christ, 
you have to be ready to get up and leave everything for Christ, whatever it may be. He has to be the most important person in your life. And let's get the third case, verse 61. So first case, fellow volunteers to follow Christ. Second case, Jesus calls the person. Third case, again, he volunteers to follow Christ. Verse 61, and another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. Verse 62, and Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Third fellow, what was wrong with him? He has an excuse. He has an excuse. His excuse is what? Let me first. Just like, you know, kind of like the second guy. But he has an excuse for putting things off. And his thing is that, let me first. Let me first. I mean, it's a, another case when you want to do something first for yourself before you follow Jesus Christ. Don't you always say, I know, let me first get married, Lord, before I serve you. Let me first get this job before I could serve you 100%. Let me first pay my debts off, Lord, before I serve you 100%. You're not first, Lord. I'm first. That's the attitude of this third person. Right? Second person, you know, when Lord called him, he wanted to follow the Lord. But he just wanted to bury his dad, right? But Lord said, you know, am I most important to you? Third person I want to follow you, Lord. He's volunteering. Don't you guys volunteer to follow the Lord? And then you're like, but Lord, let me first take care of this. So they think that they're following Christ closely because this person is volunteering. But they don't know they're far behind it. And they're like, Lord, Lord, let me, let me, you know, let me take care of this. So, so right now, Lord's right here. Say you accepted Christ and you've been close to the Lord. You got right with the Lord, you know, after years of, you know, backsliding. And then, okay, follow me on a daily discipleship. And the Lord's right here. And suddenly you go, Lord, 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 you know, let me first take care of my job. The Lord's continuously moving. And you're falling apart. Or you're standing where you are. You're like, oh, Lord, 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 I need to get married, Lord. You know, before Lord, you come back, I need to get married. And you know, I need to, you know, experience, you know, marriage. I ask some people, you know, if they, they would rather go back, you know, otherwise, right? Hopefully not. <laughs> We're walking, walking, and walking, and walking, right? And coming back. <laughs> I mean, so you're taking care of your job, you're taking care of your marriage, and you're like, Lord, Lord, you know, I have to have zero debt before I could serve you 100%. And then you're still stuck here. And Lord's all the way over there now. He's gone. That's how you are. What does that show? Like the verse 62? You're looking back to your life. You're constantly looking back. You're wishing, you keep on wishing you could still be there. Right? When you plow, if you want to plow well on a field, you got to go straight. You could only look forward. But you're constantly get distracted and looking back. You're not 100% sold out for the Lord. You're not. You keep on looking back, right? Man, what if, what if, what if? You keep on looking back at your shoulder. Can you imagine? It's a 100-meter dash Olympic sprint, and then you look back, right? No, you're going to, it's one by split, split second, like 0.001 second. And then you look back, that's like split second, and you're going to lose the race. That's why you have to think about it. I mean, am I trying to take care of my own stuff first before I follow Jesus Christ? 
Or am I willing to follow him and let other things be taken care of accordingly? Is he first or are you first? I mean, that's such a cliche question, but it's something that you and I have to ask before we make any decision. Is Lord Jesus Christ first or am I first? Am I doing this? Am I taking this job because it's first to me? Because I could be more, how should I say, in the eyes of general public, you know, more powerful, famous, with more, you know, pedigree, you know, with more, you know, stand where I'm standing? Or am I doing it for Lord Jesus Christ? It is something that you, all, you and I have to go through as you grow and then you have to make a living, right? Or are you going to sacrifice your time in the ministry with Lord Jesus Christ to serve you and your own belly more, to serve your family and their belly more? Lord will definitely provide your need. You do your best. You, know, you don't have to worry about that. That's a promise in the Word of God. Your needs will be met. But are you putting your wants above Jesus Christ? And that's a question that you and I struggle on a daily basis. Am I putting my want over Jesus Christ? Then what are you going to do? You're going to constantly look back. You're not following Jesus Christ on a daily basis. You're constantly looking back, right? And especially those who have more before you got saved, you'll definitely look back. That's what devil's going to do. You know, you're like, man, before I got saved, you know, I was rich. You know, I had more stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't have any debt, blah, blah, blah. But now after I got saved, oh, man, you know, I'm following Christ, but this problem, that problem, that problem, that problem. And then you're trying to go back to your old job, you know. You're trying to go back to, you know, old fling, Right. Maybe you're not married, but you're like, man, this Christian man and woman is making my life hard because they want to live right for Jesus Christ. But the person that I met in the past, man, they didn't care. You know, they did whatever they wanted, but they were still Christian, you know, very back worldly Christian. Then you constantly look back and look back and look back. Do you think you'll be ever sold out to Lord Jesus Christ if you constantly look back at your old life? You're not. If you have issues, resolve it with Lord Jesus Christ right now. You know, if you have to confess your sins, confess your sins, get right with the Lord, and move on. Our Christian walk is going forward. It's not going backwards. If you ever want to be 100%, 100% sold out for Jesus Christ, always, however small the step is, take that step forward. Even if it is 0.001 millimeter, take that step forward. Don't go backwards. If you ever go backwards, I mean, what's the term backslidden about, right? You're going to backslide. Are you 100% sold out for Lord Jesus Christ? Are you willing to sold out? be sold out 100% for Jesus Christ? Or are you going to stay where you are, go backwards? Live in sin and regret the rest of your life. Let's pray. Dear Father.